Hey there YouTube, welcome back to Artichoke Dip and I'm going to make the second video on for the newbies and in this video we're going to go into the importance of character creation but mainly character background and I'm going to talk about tables. Now I'm not talking about table you're going to sit at and play and eat food at. I'm talking about randomized tables and the importance of having them for solo RPG and how they can at times throw a wrench in the gears and take your solo RPG to an entirely different uh, how shall we put this path that you never intended in the beginning and I have a lot of fun with them and I'm gonna go through some of them and explain them to you before I start this video if you like it please give me a like if you are enjoying my channel please subscribe for you new subscribers uh, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, I'm happy to have you and uh, for you that have been there with me from the beginning, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart guys for making this channel great and um, as always, game on my friends, game on. And uh, so <clears throat> one thing I have uh, recently been doing is I do enjoy to play guitar. So. I decided to make a track of music that I can play in the background while I do my videos. And the nice thing is, is it's not copyrighted. It's all mine. So everything you hear is me. And let's jump right on into the video. And this time I'm going to do it a little differently. Instead of me just talking to you one on one, I'm going to have more of a table perspective for you guys. And I think with that, um, you're going to get a little bit more out of it. So. Let's do that. Let's jump right to the table and let's start explaining it. All right, guys. All right, guys. Um, so for the demonstration of this video, I'm going to use the basic fantasy book here to explain it. And this could be easily adapted to any RPG system that you use. Now, some people I've talked to um, with RPG games, one of the things that they didn't like and they find extremely complicated and it has um, really shied them away from a game is character creation. Some people have said that it's been too complicated for them to understand and um, that's too bad and if you're struggling with character creation I want to talk about it and give you some ideas to um, really help you uh, you know come up with um, some better characters now of course you can use any system right and we can of course go in here and choose a character class and roll the dice and create a character and start playing and there's nothing wrong with that now a few things here that I want to talk about and that's fine but when you do a solo RPG, your characters have to be somewhat heroic. You know what I mean? They're they're more special than everybody else in the world that you're playing in. There's um, a reason why they have been chosen, whether they're part of a prophecy or maybe there's a chain of events that has tied them into this particular quest to see it through. And so because of that, they have certain attributes that are more keen and than what would uh, an average NPC have, you know what I mean? So where I start, before I even go to this step, when I make a character, first thing I do is I start out with a piece of paper and I go to my character background and I come up with an idea. So. For idea for my character, I'm going to say he has a background of a smithy, and he comes from generations of blacksmiths, right? So that's going to give him, I'm going to say, a plus one proficiency or however else you would like to word that with one particular weapon and for this I'm gonna choose long swords right 
okay? Now, with this, um, another thing I'm going to include is say, maybe perhaps they have black steel, what I'm gonna call black steel, okay? Which is a relatively strong type of steel that's only mined in this area where my character came from, and it gives these weapons a plus one to damage, okay? So, we have my character idea, my character background. It comes from a long line of blacksmiths, so he's pretty proficient with a long sword. Um, he wields them, he makes them, he tests them, and the steel that they use, the black steel, is a little bit harder than your normal variety steel that's found in this world. So, they get a plus one to damage because it's more resilient. Now, I could, if I wanted to, um, at this point, I could decide to race my character. And I think just for simplicity, we're going to say he's human. And I'm going to say due to um, ravaging wars of the lands between orcs and humans his um his village was destroyed his parents were murdered and um with nowhere to go he was quickly picked up i'm gonna say by the local uh royal militia taken into their ranks as a blacksmith and um he demonstrated some skill with a sword and was soon put into the ranks as a militiaman or a mercenary so i'll just put Militia man. Okay. So he's had combat training and combat background. So for me, for my character, I'm going to give him a plus one to constitution, right? Okay. I think um, that's a pretty good start for a character background. So now what I'm going to do is go to... the book open it up and I'm going to character class fighter so he's gonna start out as a level one his hit dice is gonna be a 1d6 so I'm going to just pencil that in I'm gonna put HD 1d6 and he is a human so I'm going to go to the class section of this book. Races, here we are. Dwarves, elves, halflings, and humans. Okay, it says humans come in a broad variety of shapes and sizes. The game master must decide what sort of humans live in the game world. An average human male is in good health, stands six feet tall, weighs about 175 pounds. Most humans live 75 years. Humans may be any class, special abilities. Humans learn unusually quickly, gaining a bonus of 10% to all experience points and earn. So I have a plus 10% to my experience. Okay, saving throws. Humans are the standard and thus have no saving throw bonuses. So, but I think we got enough to start there. Okay, so using their template, this is how I would do this. Now, I'm going to take this page out, and I'm going to start over, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Oh, tore it, tore it, tore it. Okay, so his name, we're just going to put Frank. And his class is a fighter. His race is human. Now from here, I'm gonna go into my attributes. So we're gonna have strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, 
and charisma Wee. and then down here I'm gonna have my equipment list and he's already gonna start out with a plus one longsword so we already know he has that right we already decided that on his background and then over here I'm gonna put his HD which is hit dice for his hit points it's gonna be 1d6 for his level and then his level will be one all right so when I come to my abilities there's several ways you can do this the way that I really like to do it and to be honest with you I do this with all of mine is I will one through seven I take four d6 and I roll them so out of these one is the lowest I take the one out and then I count the remaining which is going to be 16 and I repeat that Now, if I roll, you know, all together, adding up all these dice, if it's like 9, <clears throat> basically anything below 10, I just re-roll it. I don't use that. If I'm doing an NPC, that's completely different, though. So far, this is shaping up pretty nice, huh? So, I'm going to show you... Well, I do this okay good example 9 10 but taking a high 3 is 9 so I'm going to reroll that so 12 14 15 16 17 18 So as we can see, 12 is going to be my lowest. I'm going to scratch 12 right off. Okay, he's a fighter, so he's got to be strong. He uses melee weapons. So I'm going to put his strength at a 16. And I want him to have a fair amount of hit points. So I'm going to put 16 in my constitution. But because of his background, and he's um, pretty healthy, I'm going to make his constitution a 17. So I'm going to cross out my two 16s. Those are burned up. My dexterity, um, I'm going to put a 14. My intelligence, um, I'm going to put a 13 in his intelligence. 14 in his wisdom. And then a 13 in his charisma. He's really well liked. So now I would go and adjust all of my attributes modifiers. And as you can see right here, that's where we'll have them. So for simplicity, I'm just going to read them off. So a 16 through a 17 is a plus 2, so it's a plus 2 to his strength. Um, plus two to his con so now his HP or hit points now when I first roll a character it's like 1d6 I will say six so he's got six seven eight so he starts with eight hit points so now uh, let me see here 13 through 15 plus one so this is gonna make the rest of this pretty simple plus one plus one plus one plus one, plus one. Now, with his intelligence, he has a plus one, so he's going to start with two languages. So, um, with that, what I'm going to do is give him common. And I'm going to say dwarvish because of his blacksmithing background. So, there we go. That'll help with that. 
All right, and so now as you can see, I pretty much have it flushed out. I mean, the character is pretty well flushed out. He started with his equipment. Now, one thing I use with my character creation, and one thing I, I kind of don't like about a lot of RPGs is when it comes to encumbrance from your equipment. And they give you exact um, weights of all your equipment and you're supposed to add this up to your strength. How I simplify that is I look at my strength. I got a strength of 16. I'm able to carry 16 items. Now, I don't mean he can carry 16 war horses. I mean he could carry 16 items on himself. So my equipment... Let me continue it over here. 15 and 16. And if you look at that, it actually does work out. I mean, that's a lot of equipment he can, he can actually carry on himself. So, of course, like if I have a backpack, that's going to be one thing. If, 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 let's just put that in right now. So, two will be a backpack. Okay, and you're going to see how fast this will go. Then he's going to have a water skin, of course. Okay. Um, I'm going to give him, um, a lantern. I'm going to say a pint of oil. Um, flint and steel. Okay, and... You see, I got the backpack, water skin, lantern, one pile of oil, flint and steel, we'll say 28 iron rations, because he's going to want to eat, right? And I always outfit my guys with a hooded cloak, just for weather reasons. So as you can see, just a starting package that I gave him, it's burned up quite a bit of what he can actually carry but it's there okay so now I'm going to go to my saving throw because if you remember they said the saving throw was actually um, pretty well standard there really wasn't anything too particularly special about it so let me get to that I can't remember exactly what page to keep that on Hmm. Ah, 52. So here's my saving throws, and he is a fighter from zero to first level. So... I'm gonna leave myself a column open, and I like to put it up here. And I'm going to put in his armor, what kind of armor he's wearing. And then, of course, his AC, which is for his armor class. We're going to get to that in a second. So, fighter, uh, death, poison, ray. So, over here. Death, ray, slash, poison. 12. Magic wands. It's a 13. Uh, paralysis or petrify. Fourteen. Dragon's breath. Spell 17. Now, um, because he is in the militia, I'm going to give him an update on his armor to start out with. So, I'm going to um, give him... Oh, let me see.
I'm going to say leather armor. That's where he's going to start out. And his AC will be a 13. So 13 plus his dex modifier, which is 1, will actually bring his AC to 14. And he's got leather. All right. And so there's my armor. There's that. Now, with his equipment, I'm going to say um, he did rec uh, receive a dagger. So up here, I just put in for, to keep it simple for me, um, I put in a section and I'll just put weapons and I'm going to put plus one long sword and when I look at the long sword here two, 1d8 so it's gonna do 1d8 plus he gets a plus one because he's trained with this particular type of sword and I'm just gonna put black steel with an asterisk next to him so we know this is a special weapon now typically he would get two but because he's trained with this weapon he's going to get plus three so he's going to get 1d8 plus three and he has a dagger so that's going to be a 1d4 plus two and it's going to have a range of 10 feet And that's how I do my character creation, guys. That's how simple it is. And I think it's taken us maybe about 15 minutes to do that. And it's all set and ready to play. Frank is ready to go out and uh, start saving the world. Now, another way you, you could do the attributes, right, is using the 1 through 7 again. 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, and seven. Actually, I'm gonna leave six. We're gonna go one through six. Now I start them all out at nine. And then I roll four D6. Add all this up. So we got 12, 15, 17. Now I got 17 points to add to this. So I can just start whittling that down if I want to and make this an 11 and then I could take three more take that down to 12 and take this up to a 12 and or if I wanted to be really greedy I could take it down to six and so on and so forth I mean you can see where I'm going with this so there's another way that you could do your attributes now most game systems will tell you to only roll three of those and then as you're building your character um roll three dice and put it into the attributes and then base your character off of that i really don't like that i don't agree with it i think of the character i want first and then i build from there so i hope this helps guys when you're if you're new to rpg and, and solo rpg and, and Perhaps you're struggling with character creation. Maybe this will help you out. And that's how simple it is. I mean, it's really just that simple. It's a lot more of just using your imagination. And, um, you know, like I said, I have used this way for years. And um, there's no other way that I actually do real characters. This is the way I do all of them. So let's talk now. We've got the character creation out of the way. Let's talk about tables. Now, I'm not talking about this table. I'm talking about these tables. Now, if you're just getting into the hobby, and you know you may be a little leery about not wanting to spend too much money, and I can understand that. These two books are well worth your money. They're about, oh gosh, I want to say about $8, I think, at the highest, 12 bucks, depending on who you get them through. And um, 
So let's open them up and see how these work with your solo RPG. So when you're playing your solo RPG and you got your Mythic or whatever emulator you're using or you're playing, there's going to be times to where you're going to be confronted with certain questions. And those will be NPCs or what's in a room or go see um, the innkeep and ask for... And now you could come up with a name on the fly if you wanted to, but if you want to keep things more randomized and a little bit more surprising in your game, I recommend picking up one of these. So let's take a look at this, what this book contains. This one, of course, has the credits, tells you how to use the book. It gives you um, unlimited amount of male and female names. Then it goes into items you'd find in a wizard's chamber, in an, an alchemist's lab, in a cottage, in a bandit's hideout, in an office, a warehouse, a royal tomb, a noble's bedchamber, a portmaster's office, an adventurer's dead body, a hunter's camp, a ship captain's quarters, a dead goblin, fantasy desk, an inn keeps inns kitchen so that would be a yeah an inn in their kitchen weapons armor and equipment book titles potion ingredients medicinal herbs culinary herbs and spices and then of course there's several tables on gemstones and then it goes into encounters and events forest encounters mountain encounters swamp encounters seafaring encounters catastrophes rumors and odd jobs so there's a lot you can get out of this book alone and if you're not familiar with tables, just basically you open it up. These are gemstones. Let's say um, your characters have just uh, entered a room and it's empty. There's no monsters, but they found a locked wooden box. And they happen to pop the box open and there's treasure inside. So what's in it? What is there for, your, for them to find? Well, 67... They find four garnets, and it's just that simple. So I use this one a lot. I actually have a lot of fun with this, um, and I use it in a lot of my RPGs. I have a lot of books on tables. This is the second one, which is book two to the first one I showed you here. And this one kind of gives you a little bit more in depth. Well, let's take a look. And of course, you got um, your credits, how to use the book, goblin names, orc names, kobold names, dungeon room, and you got four tables, items in a smithy, items in a troll's cave, musical instruments, maps, adventuring gear, booths in the market, NPCs or non player characters, if you're not familiar with what that means, fortunes, insults, jobs. NPC reactions to failed pickpocket attempt, which is, again, if you don't know what NPC is, non-player character. Non-combat encounters. Reasons for a player character is absent for a session. And then, of course, there's several tables on towns for town names. And it's the same thing. I mean, as you go through the book, it's just tables upon tables. Just to help you... Um, Keep your RPG fresh and alive and always moving forward. So let's maps. Let's say in that box that your adventurers have opened up, they also found a map. What did they find a map of? 85. Let's see what 85 is. They find a map to a secret grove, which could spawn a whole new adventure. Isn't that interesting? Now, this one right here I talked about before. Um, this is printed for third edition Dungeons and Dragons. It's published by AEG. I've used this a lot. And oh man, this is a really, its name tells it all. It's a toolbox. And as you can see, I've used it so much that the binding's starting to come apart. But this just gives you 
an incredible amount of information that you can use when you're doing your solo RPG. Um, I mean, it's just, let's see, like right here, Castle and Keep Diversions 1. Let's see what that's all about. Looks like in a 19. A guardsman has slipped off the wall. Okay, well, that could go one of two ways, you know. That could be, you could go to the guardsman's um, assistance and help him out, and you he could be in debt to you and help uh, your party out, gain riches, or it could go down another path, and maybe the other guardsman didn't witness him falling, but seen him injured on the ground and take it as your adventurers attacked him. And that would definitely put a spin on things, wouldn't it? So... And this is another, it's a very good book. Um, if you like third edition products and you're, and you're doing a lot of solo RPG with third edition, anything um, that's based off the third edition rules of 3.5, or even in the fifth edition now, I mean, it wouldn't matter. This is a book you probably really enjoy to have. And of course it goes into the introduction. Um, it had, chapter one is all wilderness. This will go into everything that you could encounter in the wilderness. Um, this is all dungeons, and it goes from you know dungeon architecture to stocking the dungeon traps, a wizard's laboratory. I mean, just a wealth of information. And then it goes into cities, and then it goes into people, and it even has a part to help you develop characters. People, names, uh, character concepts, magic, NPCs, heroes, animal champions. And the appendix gives you a little bit more, um, gives you some tactics, some supplemental tables. And it gives you some forms if you want to um, help randomize your encounters, your monsters even more. So, really good. Let's take a look at this character concept really quick. Um, 155. So let's uh, let's just see. Let's roll a twenty cider and see what it suggests for a character concept. And we have a sixteen. And... Colorblind. You can't see the difference between either red and green or blue and yellow. Perhaps you can't see any color at all. Well, that could make some interesting, um, huh, we can always add that to our character. Ooh. I would say his disadvantage is Frank is colorblind. So we can put a negative one. spotting color if he's asked because he just can't see it so he always gets a negative one on every single one so as you can see that's how that works I'm not gonna really linger on that too much um I got a couple other books here I really want to talk to you about okay this one I talked about this before I love this book Dungeon for the Masters. What is this? Well, if you're just getting into solo RPG, you've probably noticed they may have given you a sample dungeon and then from there on out, it's up to you to design dungeons and run them yourself. Um, and, okay, what if you don't have time or what if you lack the creativity for that? And this would be a good book for you to get. This is literally 100 maps so there's a hundred dungeons in here and very simple and I mean they're very bland so it leaves a lot for you to stock and do with these things and now if you use a random dungeon generator that's great um, I have done that in the past and 
Uh, you know, if you're not familiar with that, a random dungeon generator would be, as you can see, you got these different size rooms. So I would list the different size rooms and I would number it either on a D6 or a D8. And as my characters are going through, I would roll that and that particular room size would come up. And then at that point, I would randomize it and stock it with monsters, treasure traps, what have you. So this book, um, which is really, really awesome. Believe it or not, um, the adventure that I'm playing right now that I started, I talked about my Necromancer. Um, they had started here and they got made it to this first room where they're overrun by gnolls and he had used a spell of black speech and um, summoned an ancient um, shadow demon that had um, possessed his fighter and had killed his halfling rogue and he was able to escape and I roll up these three characters using basic fantasy just because I had just got this and um, I was really excited to use it and I wanted to try it out and from there it spawned a whole adventure I mean I'm it's um, let me grab the book so I can show you so from this one room, and using these books I have showed you, has turned into this right here. And as I've explained in all my videos, you know, one important to keep a journal. So going along, you know, they've made it to here. I'm creating the map. So essentially, I'm making a um, world campaign module. At this point, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, and as you can see, here's my characters. He's an undead shadow walker. He's now an NPC. He's the one that's possessed by the shadow demon. Um, here is my necromancer that actually made it out. His name is Lazarus. And um, so from there, believe it or not, using these tables, books um he ran across a uh npc in a tavern who happened to help him out in a very tight situation and uh unfortunately the dwarf did not like the half orc um patron that was there at the bar and had attacked him and so the dwarven fighter and my human necromancer have kind of forged a friendship and they are now continuing on um this adventure but he originally started out as an npc just a randomized name out of uh, this book right here so just to show you how valuable you know these things are and how one little small thing like this can turn into this right here so, and of course, um, I've gotten to the point, um, I want to play this a little bit more tonight. They have reached the gates of the Dwarven Kingdom. So, as you can see, my little handy artwork, Dwarven Gates. Yeah, I know, I'm no Picasso, but... Okay. So, now, the last book I'm going to talk about is this one. It's a little pricey. Um, I love this book. I absolutely have fallen in love with it. Uh, I use it a lot, and there's a lot of stuff in here. Even with me, for I've been playing role-playing games for a long time. Um, I still learned a lot from this book and got a lot from it that really helped me out and really, really, really took my solo RPGs to the next level. And that is classic dungeon design guide. Now. This goes way, way, way further into depth about, you have tables, but it gives you a lot more to think about. Um, I'm going to read this to you so you can understand. It says, the majority of dungeon adventures typically begin with the PCs plopping directly in front of the entrance. Following a quick preamble, however, classic adventures and dungeon modules once used a significant wider array of approaches 
which served to greatly increase players' interest and engagement at the beginning of the adventure. As a suggested return to such modes of play, the following ways to the dungeon are recommended for GM consideration. Roll a d100 and consult the following table. Please note that the defined adventure scenario as detailed earlier might also inform the decision on which of these approaches to use. So let's do that. Let's roll a d100 and let's just see what the entrance would be like into the dungeon. So I got a 38. And 34 to a 40. Flight. The group can fly to the dungeon magically or by using tame beasts such as Hippographs or Pegasus. An aerial adventure can occur with flying monsters encountered along the way. This is an ideal choice for cloud, castle, or mountaintop dungeons. So as you can see guys, this book right here, if you're doing solo RPG, is well worth its weight in gold. It's going to give you a lot to think about. It's going to take your um, solo RPG to the next level. And um, I can't tell you, uh, man, I can't tell you how much I love this book. And James, if you're listening, do not buy this book. Don't. <laughs> You'll find out in a little bit. So, um, anyways, extreme large wealth of information. And I can, I'm going to leave a link to these. Um, and you guys can shop around and see if you'd like to pick them up and include them on your game table. And I think this is going to conclude our uh, video for uh, RPG and for the newbies. And... You know, if you're new to the hobby, welcome, and I hope you have a lot of fun um, with solo RPG. It has given me hours and hours and years and years of enjoyment, and um, I love it. And uh, so, once again, um, game on, my friends. Game on. Have fun. I hope this helped, and I hope this little demonstration helped you guys out. If you guys like this type of video... You know, with my hands, you know, let me know. I can do more like it. Um, but I figured I'd just try a different approach this time. All right, guys. I will uh, see you later.